parking area or construction or something. For the record, Charles Johnson, Assistant General Counsel. The issue of the relocates was uh, discussed, uh, I believe, over uh, several meetings of the internal task force. And the conclusions that were drawn as a result of those discussions is that there's nothing in the existing statute or the agency's rules which would permit that, uh, and that it would require uh, specific authority for that to continue to occur without uh, going afoul of the existing statute or rules. And Charles, we've included that language in the compliance staff report under the internal task force discussion. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Okay, are there any questions or discussion on this board? Um, at the very least, I think we need to do a, an FAQ or something, something in the tow hookup to Absolutely. put the industry on notice that this has been reviewed and, um, you know, it's not required, required not statutory allowed. change. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that would be a, a good topic for that. Yes, we'll definitely do that. Publication. Well, in the interim, this is truly detrimental to the consumer and to, you know, the property owner who is trying to improve their property. I mean, did you look at other statues that might, like property code or something, Charles, something in law that might not be in our statue that would help property owners in some way? Because, like I said, this is purely about the consumer and protecting the consumer. I mean, there's, it would be a travesty to have to tow a vehicle off because the lot needs to strike or make repairs, particularly whenever, you know, in many, many, many cases, I know in our case, my company, the property owner pays, <coughs> not the owner. The property owner is the one that pays us to move a vehicle so that they can strike their lot or make repairs. <coughs> and we don't want to take it to the storage facility, that's for sure. There was not a, a review of the entire set of statues, uh, and I don't think that was necessary, and that the authority to tow is in the occupations code. Uh, and no one, I guess, takes issue with whether or not there's a convenience or inconvenience. But looking at it clearly from a statutory authority uh, perspective, uh, and recognizing <coughs> that, and again, without addressing the specific resolution, but looking at it from a, a purely statutory perspective, it's not clear that the property owner has the right to have the vehicle towed if it was placed there uh, with authority. Uh, it, was, it was an authorized park, uh, and, and so whether or not the, the property owner can tow it is a is a question. Well, we're talking about move, not well move. No, tow, he's saying tow it, too. even tow it to the storage. Even tow it to the storage facility, because there's the, the vehicle was parked there properly. Uh, to begin with. So I mean, that was part of the discussion, uh, but the response we've, I've given you this morning was not to resolve that issue, but just sure. to place a marker there that, that is an issue uh, that, that, that would eventually have to be resolved. And, and I want to applaud the staff because we, the answer was already there. Yes, it, yeah. The answer was obviously in the statute. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, Bill and I pushed them at least 15 times to look at it as from every angle, and they did. Yeah. They, 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 re they really worked on this one, and it's a matter of if you hook the vehicle up, whether you're moving it across the lot or, or to the backside to achieve a good end of getting the, the, the lot striped, it's still towing somebody's vehicle without their permission, and they didn't do anything wrong. And the law does not provide for a person's vehicle to be towed without just cause. Uh, and, and that's what it boils down to. So it, it's going to require some type of statutory fix to infuse what I yes. think we, we know is common sense in this moment. Right. But it doesn't provide for that vehicle to be moved with that owner, without that owner's permission or operator's permission. Uh, and they've done nothing wrong. Uh, it, it's It's... <coughs> And again, we went back and forth with the staff, you know, they'd send up a, a response and I'm like, hmm, take another look at it. And uh, to their credit, they did, but they were they're right on this one. And I think we all know that you can't do it. We know why it's being done. 
but the law does not provide for that. Well, well, again, I wonder in the property code if there's some th rights that property owners might have separate and apart from our statute. And, you know, especially if they're bearing the burden of the cost, then, you know, it's really, it's not to be <coughs> detrimental to the public in any way. I just wonder if there might be some a hook to hang on to till it can be changed statutorily. If but there is a hook a that's out there, we will listen to it. Okay. But at this point in time, Charles is right that okay, our role right, is to yeah. interpret our occupations code and, and not find that avenue. But there are associations out the apartment. Association okay. is very effective that if they can find the hook, they will. We'll ask. And we'll <laughs> definitely sit down and talk to them yeah. on that. I had a question. When it, when it comes to parking and it's a paid parking lot, let's say, you know, a, a vehicle pays for the parking, but they might be blocking somebody in. Uh, they might not even be in a spot, but they did pay for their parking. If the parking lot operator, not necessarily like myself, the boot operator, but if the parking lot operator wants to have that towed, is that still against this rule? Is is that still? Do you mean towed to a VSF or no? Moved, just relocated, moved, just relocated. So that's another part, spot on the parking. I think lot. that's part and parcel of the same issue. So we are within the same, yes. the same realm there. Okay. Well, it, Mr. Comfort, did you describe a situation yeah. where the vehicle is blocking the flow yeah, of traffic? No, Correct. So there's some language in the statute that deals with that. Now, now you tell it to the VSF, though. You don't relocate but, it. Yeah. To the VSF. Yeah. 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 To the VSF. It's the same thing. Yeah. They yeah. relocate it. But you can tell it. There's authority to tow that. We, we understand we can tow, but a lot of times the parking companies themselves will want to just relocate. Again, it's trying to help out the consumer. They don't right. want to have to put them out any more than they have to. Um, but yeah, it can be just as simple, not necessarily even a lane but just blocking somebody in. They didn't pull all the way in. It's on a corner of a lot, and nobody can back out because of that. So, and without, you know. you're honestly referring to the specific statutory section. There's a provision in the Occupations Code 2303, which, I'm sorry, 2308, which says that if a vehicle is towed, it has to be towed to the VSF unless there's an agreement otherwise. That's Period. the provision that, that yeah. applies to both uh, setups. For, Gene Forrester here, and uh, Madam Chair, I have a, a question on the same thing. And it's really just a clarification because I've run into uh, a lot of questions from JPs and tow hearings, and the spe specific language apartment complex and uh, 2308 253, and then parking facilities under, are under 2308 254. So, whatever you wind up with. I suggest it should be clear it applies to both. Yeah, I, I, if, if, if it comes, if it involves the issue of relocating for any specific reason, I think that section of the occupation code which says they have to go to the VSF is applicable. Uh, and there's only there's only two there's only two places that that vehicle can actually be towed to. One is the VSF, the other is is by agreement of the parties. But right. if if it's an FAQ and it says apartment complex, it really need, applies to, to be to broader. Both. Yes, sir. Yeah, the parking right. facilities. Uh, correct. Okay. Thank you for your work, Charles. Thank you. I guess I'll say put. Anybody else on this? Okay. Yeah, let's get something and hook up okay. for the next, as soon as possible. Okay, the next item is whether a VSF employee may charge a notary fee for notarizing vehicle release documents. And this came out in an FAQ recently stating that they may not. And I'd always thought that the employee could do this as long as the VSF was not getting the, the fee, that the employee could do as an independent notary, they keep the fee, and that way the consumer can get their car with convenience and go on down the road. But this, <coughs> this is confusing. The FAQ sounds like the employee can't. Okay, the first one we have is whether a property owner may move a vehicle from one location <coughs> to another on the property without towing it to a licensed vehicle storage facility, uh, commonly known in the industry as a relocate that is done when the property owner is going to do repairs to the parking area or construction or something. For the record, Charles Johnson, Assistant General Counsel. The issue of the relocates 
was uh, discussed, uh, I believe, over uh, several meetings of the internal task force. And the conclusions that were drawn as a result of those discussions is that there's nothing in the existing statute or the agency's rules which would permit that, uh, and that it would require uh, specific authority for that to continue to occur without uh, going afoul of the existing statute of rules. And Charles, we've included that language in the compliance staff report under the internal task force discussion. Mm, I saw that. Okay, are there any questions or discussion on this board? Um, at the very least, I think we need to do a, an FAQ or something, something in the tow hookup to Absolutely. put the industry on notice that this has been reviewed and, um, you know, it's not Require, requires not allowed. statutory change. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that would be a, a good topic for that. Yes, we'll definitely do that. Publication. Well, in the interim, this is truly detrimental to the consumer and to, you know, the property owner who is trying to improve their property. I mean, did you look at other statues that might like property code or something, Charles, something in law that might not be in our statute that would help property owners in some way? Because, like I said, this is purely about the consumer and protecting the consumer. I mean, there's it would be a travesty to have to tow a vehicle off because the lot needs to strike or make repairs, particularly whenever, you know, in many, many, many cases, I know in our case, my company, the property owner pays, <coughs> not the owner. The property owner is the one that pays us to move a vehicle so that they can stripe their lot or make repairs. <coughs> and we don't want to take it to the storage facility, that's for sure. There was not a, a review of the entire set of statues, uh, and I think that was necessary, and that the authority to tow is in the occupations code. Uh, and no one, I guess, takes issue with whether or not there's a convenience or inconvenience. But looking at it clearly from a statutory authority uh, perspective uh, and recognizing <coughs> that, and again, without addressing the specific resolution, but looking at it from a, a purely statutory perspective, it's not clear that the property owner has the right to have the vehicle towed if it was placed there uh, with authority. Uh, it, was, it was an authorized park, uh, and, and so whether or not the, the property owner can tow it is a, is a question. Well, we're talking about move, not... Well, move, no, tow... No, he's saying tow it, to, even tow it to the storage Even tow it to the storage facility, because there's the, the vehicle was parked there properly uh, to begin with. So I mean, that was part of the discussion, uh, but the response we've, I've given you this morning was not to resolve that issue, but just sure. to place a mark on there that, that is an issue uh, that, that, that would eventually have to be resolved. And, and I want to applaud the staff because we, the answer was already there. Yes, it, yeah. The answer is obviously in the statute. Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, Bill and I pushed them at least 15 times to look at it as from every angle, and they did. Yeah. They, 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 re they really worked on this one, and it's a matter of if you hook the vehicle up, whether you're moving it across the lot or, or to the back side to achieve a good end of getting the, the, the lot striped, it's still towing somebody's vehicle without their permission, and they didn't do anything wrong. And, and the law does not provide for a person's vehicle to be towed without just cause. Uh, and, and that's what it boils down to. So it, it's going to require some type of statutory fix to infuse what I yes. think we, we know is common sense in this moment. Right. But it doesn't provide for that vehicle to be moved with that owner, without that owner's permission or operator's permission. Uh, and they've done nothing wrong. Uh, it, it's, it's, and, and again, we went back and forth with the staff. You know, they'd send up a, a response, and I'm like, Hmm, take another look at it, and uh, to their credit, they did, but they were they're right on this one. And I think we all know that you can't do it. We know why it's being done, but the law does not provide for that. I well, again, I wonder in the property code if there's some th rights that property owners might have separate and apart from our statute and, you know, 
especially if they're bearing the burden of the cost, then, you know, it's really, it's not to be detrimental to the public in any way. I just wonder if there might be some a hook to hang on to till it can be changed statutorily. If there is a hook a that's out there, we will listen to it. Okay. But at this point in time, Charles is right that okay, our role right, is to yeah. interpret our occupations code and, and not find that avenue. But there are associations out the apartment. Association okay. is very effective that if they can find the hook, they will. We'll ask. And we'll <laughs> definitely sit down and talk to them. On that. I had a question. When it when it comes to parking and it's a paid parking lot, let's say you know, a, a vehicle pays for the parking, but they might be blocking somebody in. Uh, they might not even be in a spot, but they did pay for their parking. If the parking lot operator, not necessarily like myself, the boot operator, but if the parking lot operator wants to have that towed, is that still against this rule? Is is that still... Do you mean towed to a VSF or no, move, just relocated? No, just relocated. So that's another part, spot on the parking lot. I think that's part and parcel of the same issue. So we are within the same... The same realm there, okay. Well, it, Mr. Yeah. Comfort, did you we, describe a situation where the vehicle is blocking the flow yeah, of traffic? Correct. So there's some language in the statute that deals with that. Now, now you can that. to the VSF though. You don't but relocate it yeah. to the VSF. Yeah. To the VSF. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. They yeah. relocate it. But you can tell it. There's authority to tell that. We, we, we understand we can tell, but a lot of times the parking companies themselves will want to just relocate. Again, it's trying to help out the consumer. They don't right. want to have to put them out any more than they have to. Um, but yeah, it can be just a simple, not necessarily even a lane, but just blocking somebody in. They didn't pull all the way in. It's on a corner of a lot, and nobody can back out because of that. So, and without, you know, ironically referring to the specific uh, statutory section, there's a provision in the Occupations Code 2303, which, I'm sorry, 2308, which says that if a vehicle is towed, it has to be towed to the VSF unless there's an agreement otherwise. That's Period. the provision that, that yeah. applies to both uh, setups. For Gene Forrester here, and uh, Madam Chair, I have a, a question on the same thing. And it's really just a clarification because I've run into uh, a lot of questions from JPs and tow hearings, and the spe specific language apartment complex and uh, 2308 253, and then parking facilities under, are under 2308 254. So, whatever you wind up with. I suggest it should be clear it applies to both. Yeah, I, I, if, if, if it comes, if it involves the issue of relocating for any specific reason, I think that section of the Occupations Code which says the ads go to the VSF is applicable. Uh, and there's only there's only two there's only two places that that vehicle can actually be towed to. One is the VSF, the other is is by agreement of the parties. But right. if if it's an FAQ and it says apartment complex, it really need, applies it to be to broader. Them. Yes, sir. Yeah, the parking right. facilities. Uh, correct. Okay. Thank you for your work, Charles. Thank you. I guess I'll say put. Anybody else on this? Okay. Yeah, let's get something and hook up okay. for the next, as soon as possible. Okay, the next item is whether a VSF employee may charge a notary fee for notarizing vehicle release documents. And this came out in an FAQ recently stating that they may not. And I'd always thought that the employee could do this as long as the VSF was not getting the, the fee, that the employee could do as an independent notary, they keep the fee, and that way the consumer can get their car with convenience and go on down the road. But this, <coughs> this is confusing. The FAQ sounds like the employee can't even do it. You can't even have a notary on site collecting fees. That was the consensus of the task force, yes, ma'am. And what, how does that, where is that in statute or rule? In that, that? The, the statute specifically says that the VSF is only authorized to charge a fee uh, that is provided in 2308 or 2303. These notary fees are not in any of those two, any of those two chapters of the Occupations Code. So even if the money doesn't go to the VSF? If you have an independent notary work as a VSF employee that does the notarization and keeps the fees, the VSF is not charging the fee. It's not on the receipt. It's not on the credit card. It's a separate fee altogether. Without taking issue with any of that, uh, again, I, I reiterate 
the consensus of the task force is that uh, those two that fee is not uh, a part of the two chapters of the occupations code and therefore cannot be charged if a person does not want to to, to pay that fee right. uh, should they're they're authorized to go elsewhere to have those documents notarized right. but the charge is occurring at the VSF and those fees that collect from the vehicle owner are regulated. I think we need to send this back for further review because these folks at midnight, two o'clock in the morning, picking up their cars for their brother or sister or whatever, there's nobody around. So they're not gonna go anywhere else to get that notarized at that hour of the day. They're looking at another day storage and another trip. And that's even worse than the relocate issue to not be able to do that. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. I think when someone's without their car and they can't get it to go to work the next morning, it's bad enough that they're towed. And then you can't, you're, I mean, and it's, it's a voluntary thing that people offer. You know, you don't, we don't have to do this. A lot of people don't offer it, so they do get another day's storage. But when you can help someone out by having this function at your VSF, and it's it's going to be very bad not to have that ability to do that. And, and I think those concerns are appreciated. Uh, and, and at your request, we will go back and, and, and have further discussion on the issue. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's going to change the result, but but again, out of uh, of openness, the, the discussion can, will continue, and we'll bring it back to you at the next um, meeting. Yeah, I think I think we have room here. If the VSF doesn't get the money, it's not on the credit card. It's not on the receipt. If it's a separate transaction. I don't see anything in statute that prohibits that. Well, if you take that argument, you could say that if it's not on the receipt, they could charge any other fees as well. Uh, and again, not take issue with you, but... Um, right. But this fee is not charged. They don't have to pay this fee. I mean, if the, re if the owner comes and that's their car, this fee doesn't happen. They don't need a notary. So it's not... This is something, a convenience for someone who is not the owner of the vehicle that's picking it up for someone else. So it's different in that respect because it's not, you're not saying I'm charging everybody a notary fee to get their car. It's a voluntary thing. If you want me to notarize it, I'll notarize it for $6 or you can go down and find your own notary and come back. You know, it's not, they don't have to do that to get their car, but they can leave and go get someone else to do it. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of, you know, I, I, I don't see throwing in all these fees that you have to do to get your car, but we're not putting it on the receipt. That doesn't. But I, again, we will reconsider the, the issue, but the arguments that you raised, I think were, were part of the discussion. Uh, so we, we appreciate the sensitivities and the convenience and all those, those issues, but it became a, a question of the application of the statute. And, and so, uh, as I said, we'll, we'll take this back to the task force and reconsider it, and I'll bring you back the uh, second opinion. Okay. okay, anybody else on the board have any comments? Or? Okay, let's move on to um, the last discussion item. Whether a law enforcement agency may require a VSF to check that the person picking up the vehicle has insurance before releasing the vehicle. This again was on the FAQs that went out recently and um, this is an issue for those that do police tows for no insurance that uh, it's a law enforcement requirement. It's not right. I mean this is this is the second time that we've looked at, at this specific issue and I'll, I'll take you back to the first time we looked at it uh, several years ago. Uh, there was a, um, a bill filed in one of the previous press sessions which would have authorized municipalities to, to not release vehicle, well, to, to pass an ordinance to require insurance before the vehicle was released. That bill did not pass. I thought that was for private VSFs. The, the, the bill the, that. The, the issue being is, is that. Is that there was a bill passed that would have, would have allowed a VSF to hold a, 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 a vehicle without insurance. The bill did not pass. And, and so therefore, the, by statutory construction, is that if the bill doesn't pass, then we can't have an interpretation or a rule 
to do what that bill itself would have done. In that context, I mean, that's our starting point. And now we go to the, the existing setup today, is that if a, if, a, if a municipality passes an ordinance that requires some document other than the documents that are set out in the statute for release of a vehicle, those requirements are extraneous to the statute and, and, and I don't believe are, are, are enforceable. And I think that's where the work group uh, ended up with, or ended up at, is that the statute lists specific criteria to obtain the release of a vehicle. And these requirements are, are in addition to those and, and therefore not enforceable. Okay. Number one, I thought municipalities could always be more stringent than state law. Not you just said the opposite. Not, not, not for the, the, the release of a vehicle, there's a list of things that are in the statute. Uh -huh. Statutory construction says that when the legislature lists specific criteria for, for an event to occur, that is to the exclusion of all others. And in Even this if you're a government VSF or a law enforcement? Yes, ma'am. Statutory, constru Statutory construction oh, says well. that a list of items in a statute is to the exclusion of all others, no, no, matter, no matter what the source of those other, the others is. And in this instance, the statute sets out what's required in order to obtain release of a vehicle, and our rules are, are set out to, to, to clarify those requirements. And so that list of things is to the exclusion of all others. Ms. Madam Ash? Chair, first of all, Charles, if we based our decisions on bills that didn't pass, I don't even know how that could even occur. That bill has been introduced every, se every session for the last six that I'm aware of. And it doesn't come out of committee because right. it says that we have to check every single person for their insurance. And I will tell you what, we haven't testified for those bills either because, you know, we want to put that onerous on law enforcement that requires it. But at the same hand, <coughs> the department and these rules are impeding our industry from doing business with law enforcement. Do we want to encourage them that they get their own vehicle storage facility because we cannot do what they're requiring us to do? This is not something that a VSF is, is just blatantly saying and checking that you have to have insurance. This is in a contract that these VSFs have. And it is in just way above because in any time the municipality can do what they want in furtherance of or implementation of a state law. It is a state law that you have to have insurance. And if they want to make sure that that person has insurance, whether they want to look at it themselves or let us fax it to them or however they want to do it, then this department cannot stand in a way in the way of a contract that we have with law enforcement or we're all in trouble, clearly. So I would beg to go back and look at this with, in that respect as that law enforcement absolutely has a right to do this and we're an agent of law enforcement and we, you know, the department can rely on and I thought this question was already answered that law enforcement is the one that's requiring this to happen. Therefore, we have to abide by what law enforcement tells us to do. Like I said, otherwise, or they'll just get their own storage lot and we'll all be out of business. Sorry. That's okay. But with all due respect, I, I think we're kind of back where we started in, in that it all, in it, all, it all stems from the statute. Okay, Charles. Yes, sir. I think we can do some study of this, and I can ask for an attorney general's opinion of it. That wouldn't hurt my feelings. We need to answer. This is a huge issue, Bill. This is impeding our ability to do business with law enforcement. So well, it's it, a huge issue. Right. What, what would help is if law enforcement would request of us that okay. we ask for an attorney general's opinion, and we will do that, and then we can move forward with it. And then it will be what it is. Okay. And then. Do we have any comments from our law enforcement? Members here. Yeah, I request an attorney. <laughs> 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 Me too. Okay. 
Okay, there they, you go. This is a big issue. It's because a big issue. We're enabling people to get out on the roads without insurance, and it's costing people that have insurance thousands of dollars every year. It's something that doesn't need to be happening. Well, and if they're towed for not having insurance, and then you let them out without but, proof that they got it, that's just crazy. Exactly. I mean, that's even, but that's I, just beyond the pale. I, I think, I mean. I think there are medical reference documents that would not define that as crazy. <laughs> I, I think they would just define it as what it is. However, I think we'll go with Bill's option of looking at AG's opinion and we'll figure it out because this is one of those moments of conflict where there's a local ordinance and a need and it absolutely makes sense. Somebody goes in because they don't have X, but there's also a state statute that says here are the only things here are the only things you need to release a vehicle, and it's why. And, and we, we can figure that out. And we have no, no dog in the hunt and all those other country cliche things <laughs> uh, that mean the same thing. But we'll, Brian, we'll Brian, we have added, this board and the, has added other documents to the list to get your vehicle. Have so what insurance? is impeding up? Can we? I'm asking you, why can't we? Well, no, We've I'm asking added you. other things. I, I'm asking you because yes, I'm going to ping pong it back on you because you clearly said earlier that you've testified against doing this. And you wouldn't want to do that as a rule for everybody. Because law enforcement is requiring it. Not that it's that we are do, we're doing it as an agent for law enforcement, which gives us cover under their immunity. <clears throat> you see, that's why it has to be done through contract with law enforcement. And we agree with that. What we don't agree with is that VSFs are required to check everybody's insurance and drive, insurance. drives up in the driveway. I That's understand. a whole different situation. So let's go with the AG's opinion. Can we do that? Uh, we can, but I don't understand why we can't add a document that if law enforcement requires a VSF to receive proof of insurance under that circumstance that law enforcement is the one that has a contract, Charles, are you taking notes? Then, okay. then why can't we, why can't we add it to the list? We got them on the ages. We got them on the Let me answer that. Okay. If, if I rush out and say, all right, we're going to do that, fiat. Okay. And the attorney general says, oh, Mr. Kuntz, you never had authority to do that. That doesn't, that doesn't go well as a headline in the paper. And other agencies have been slammed recently for going beyond what their statutory authorities were. Uh, we're going to follow through in an orderly manner. We'll ask for an attorney general's opinion, and we will solve the issue. If the attorney general says we don't have the authority, then what haps, has to happen is we have to get a bill in to uh, make that uh, available. I understand that, but at the same hand, we don't ask the Attorney General every time we add another document to who's the owner, who's this, who's that, in our rules. We don't. So I don't see why that this would be different since, you know, it's something that is a problem and, and is something that uh, law enforcement has the right to do. Clearly they have the right to do it. So I don't understand why, since law enforcement in statute has the right to do it, that there couldn't be a form that is used for that purpose. You see I what I mean? I understand what you're I saying. I understand that you don't see that. We'll ask for an attorney but general. we're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> All right. I clearly can. Okay. I'm with, if that's what we need, we'll fix it in Mi statute. Mr. Koontz is a risk taker, and I go I way out on the limb quite often. I know you uh, do. You're asking me to go a little <coughs> further than I'm comfortable All right. So I, we're going to uh, I appreciate step back that. and ask for the opinion. So who is going to, is... Are we going to get it from Vince? Vince has requested uh, an AG, AG opinion. Consider it done. Through TDLR. Okay. So okay. they're going to have that out next week. <laughs> <laughs> it, may, it may be a Christmas present. It may be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other comments or I don't, any discussion on that? I, okay. I, well, I, can we look, can we help with that? Um, Drafting any assistance you want to provide okay. as you can. Okay. We're not going to have you at the table writing it. I understand. And you're not going to get final blessing. I understand. But if there's language you want to send to 